From being disqualified mid-fight for using an asthma inhaler, to being completely banned from the UFC for wearing speedos in a fight, these are accessories that are banned from the UFC. UFC fighters have been showcasing their country flags for a long time now, and this trend has been extremely popular amongst not only the UFC, but many sporting organizations worldwide. However, to fan surprise, flag wearing in the UFC would come to a sudden end in May 2022. On this date, a ban was placed preventing any fighter from displaying their country's flag wherever any UFC cameras were shooting. And here's what happened to Li Jing Lang after he tried celebrating a fight win with the Chinese flag after the ban was implemented. I love China! But why was the ban even put in place? Well, Dana White never gave a complete explanation behind the ban, which many considered strange because Dana is known to tell most things how they are. But this time, it wasn't the case. And when asked in an interview about it, simply said this. Uh, finally, Randy Brown said the fighters weren't allowed to walk out with flags. Is that something that's going to move forward? Yeah. Is there any specific reasons or just no flags? You know why. You guys know why. Hey Dana. Dana. Let's not even play that fucking Dana, game. I think, uh... Yeah. However, the public aren't stupid. People and even fighters have speculated it was due to the situation going on between Russia and Ukraine and the UFC having over 30 Russian and several Ukrainian fighters clearly didn't want to have any political involvement or controversy involved with the UFC brand and needed a way to prevent themselves from getting involved. But they couldn't just target and ban Russian and Ukrainian flags alone, so instead decided that no country flags were allowed to be shown from then on out at any UFC related event. Fighters definitely weren't happy about the decision. But flags aren't the only thing that the UFC has banned fighters from bringing into the ring, and this next item supposedly gives fighters an unfair advantage in fights. In fact, one fighter's win was even completely overturned because of it. Now we all know that asthma is triggered through sport and general physical activity is something that many athletes suffer with, and it is not unusual for even the professionals to suffer with the condition. Well, unfortunately for the UFC, unless pre-approved, that's all you can do if you have an asthma attack, suffer. Because back in 2019, US heavyweight Greg Hardy won a fight against Ben Sassoli. However, the fight was quickly overturned to a no contest because of the use of an asthma inhaler between the second and third rounds of the fight. Many fighters were shocked when it happened and were quick to call out Hardy for the use of the inhaler. After the fight was overturned, Hardy claimed that he requested to use the inhaler before the fight and the commission of the UFC said it would be okay the fight, man. I'm doing, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I asked permission. He told me I could, and I'm in trouble again. However, the commission responded to these claims, saying that his request to use an inhaler in the fight was not pre-approved, and therefore, the no contest would stand. But according to USADA, the official anti-doping company of the UFC, had Hardy had the use of his asthma inhaler pre-approved before the fight, it most likely would have been no problem. Because even though the medication in asthma inhalers, albuterol, is prohibited after a certain dosage, a few puffs of the inhaler would not have put Hardy over this threshold. But unfortunately, it was too late for Greg Hardy and along with the win being overturned, the win bonus he received from winning the fight got taken from him with it. And asthma inhalers aren't the only item the UFC thinks of giving fighters an unfair advantage. This next ban came to everyone's attention after the recent fight and return of the GOAT, John Jones. After over three years since his last fight in the UFC, John Jones returned to the ring on March 4, 2023 as a heavyweight to face Cyril Gain for the heavyweight title. Now Jones would try entering the fight with tape around two of his toes as well as his foot before being stopped and told to remove the taping. But why was Jones wearing the tape in the first place? Well, back in April 2013, he fought Chael Sonnen, where he went on to not only break, but pretty much have his big toe hanging off his foot during just the first round of the fight. Regardless, John Jones said he didn't even realize until he finished and won the fight that his toe was completely mutilated. All right, I'm here with the champ. Uh oh, oh, he's got a broken foot. All right, have a seat. All right, champ. To say the least, the break was pretty brutal and an injury like this would never be able to heal to its 100% capacity that it once had. So John Jones began taping two of his toes together in every fight since in order to provide it with more bracing. And this hadn't been an issue up until his latest fight against Game. I made like a, almost like a little cast around my toe that linked down to the middle of my foot. 
uh, so that the, the tape wouldn't slide off the, my, my, uh, my toes. And when I got out there, the commission was just like, you can't tape your feet. And I'm like, dude, I've always taped my feet. So as you can see, the taped toes were not the issue, but because Jones had made a cast and put some tape around his foot, this was the taping deemed illegal by the UFC and had to be cut off. The taping around his toes was deemed as legal and remained, and Jones went on to win the fight by TKO in the first round, earning him the heavyweight title. Not bad after a three year return. And tape isn't the only thing the UFC is worried about fighters wearing because after one fighter wore speedos for a fight back in 2011 and showed a little more than he expected, they were quickly banned right after along with the fighter who wore them. It was in August 2011 that fighter Dennis Hallman decided to fight wearing a pair of speedos as his fighting shorts and to say the least, Dana White was not impressed. You know what, I, I was curious what you thought though about um, that being a thing of beauty. The shorts on Dennis Hallman being a thing of, of, of not, you know, that was dis disgraceful, would you say? I mean, how did you feel about that? I'd call it disgusting. That was disgusting. Uh, I don't know how his cornermen, first of all, I'm pissed off that somebody that works for me let him come out with those on, number one. Number two, how, as a cornerman, how do you seriously say, dude, this might be a bad idea. You, you might not want to wear these out there. And just to make things worse, during the fight, Foreman's crown jewels were even exposed from the speedos to the crowd at one point. So anyway, after the fight, Dennis claimed that he had lost a bet to his friends that meant he had to wear the speedos and he thought it was funny and didn't think anyone would be cross about it. Well, clearly this didn't matter and Dana White said that he would never let that happen again and that he guarantees it. Dana kept his promise and banned speedos completely from the UFC and also refused Dennis from any more contract tracks in the UFC and his UFC career would end after his final fight in December that same year. And speedos aren't the only thing the UFC is worried about fighters wearing because they've also completely banned fighters from wearing any type of sponsorships or brands on their shorts. It all started back in 2014 after the UFC signed a deal with Reebok and it was from this moment that fighters were no longer allowed to wear their own shorts but instead could only wear UFC provided shorts that had only the official UFC branding and sponsorships on them. However, this wouldn't stop one fighter. Donald Cerrone was known to ritually wear a patch from his old Muay Thai shorts sewn onto his UFC shorts by his grandma for every fight. And since the banning of any non Reebok branded apparel, this wouldn't change his tradition. Cerrone continued to wear his patch, but of course, the UFC ended up fining him around $60,000 for the incident, to which Cerrone responded, saying that he would continue taking the fine and keep wearing his patch. Well, fast forward to 2019, Donald Cerrone would face Al Iaquinta and he would once again wear his famous patch, but this time, instead of being fine to everyone's surprise, the UFC would actually encourage him to wear the patch. I noticed you've got the patch on your shorts. Yeah, there it is. Which, what was the story with that? Because the last couple, didn't you get fined for having that on you before? I did, I got fined. Man, the um, UFC came in tonight and they sewed it on there for me. Did you ask for it or they just came they in just, and said? They did it. Fighters can choose from a range of color and style of their shorts, However, the branding and sponsorships are out of their power. And on top of this, all fighters that are champions must wear black shorts with gold riding on them. But to be honest, I doubt any champions are complaining about their shorts color, despite not getting to choose what color they wear. If you enjoyed the video, you'll love this one.